Hello everyone, this is Dr. E and for today we're going to be working on proofs involving special quadrilaterals in geometry. Proving is a true test that we are understanding the conditions, theorems, properties of our polygons and for today we're going to be putting all those knowledge that we have on the use of the theorems and uh, definitions and conditions of the polygons that we have dealt with in the past so that we can prove and answer and write the necessary um, articulation that we need to be able to uh, prove some of the parts or given angles or uh, shapes that we're working on in geometry. And for this particular lesson, we're going to be proving a trapezoid. So this is going to be the first shape that we're going to be using today. So before we um, work on the given information and what we need to prove about this trapezoid, one technique that you can do is to have the end in mind, which means try to visualize and remember all the things that you can uh, use or all the theorems and properties that you can use pertaining to the shapes in a trapezoid. And here we are seeing parallel lines, we are seeing congruent lines, and we are also seeing triangles that we can most likely use to be able to prove what we need to prove in this trapezoid. So now that our mind and brain is ready for the properties and theorems that we might use for the trapezoid. So let's start with the given information that we ha have according to this trapezoid. So we are given tra trapezoid X, Y, Z, W, and we need to prove that it is indeed a trapezoid. And what is this trapezoid that we are seeing? It is kind of looking like a rhombus, but according to this problem, this quadrilateral is a trapezoid and our task is to prove that this is indeed a trapezoid. So first we need to work on the given information that we have and the first information that we have is that triangle TZX which is formed in this trapezoid is congruent to another set of triangle that is found in this trapezoid which is Y, X, Z. So now that we know that those two triangles are congruent, we are closer and closer to our proof. And another information that we know about this trapezoid is that line WX is not congruent to line ZY. And now we are seeing visually that ZY is a diagonal line and WX is an orthogonal line or a straight line that forms a 90 degree angle. So we can really see that they are not parallel. So if you want to sh sh show and see that they are not parallel, you can extend your line WX sideways and you know that it's not going to be equal or congruent to ZW because their angles are different. So now these are the information that we're going to be working on and using so that we can prove that XYZW is indeed a trapezoid. So the first move that we're going to be Working on is since we are seeing a congruent triangles, why not use their angles and use their congruency as well to start with our proof. And in this case, I'm going to focus on angle Z and angle X, and I will call it angle one and angle two. And I know that angle one and angle two are congruent because since we are seeing congruent triangles, we can now use the famous CPCTC acronym, which stands for corresponding parts of a congruent triangles are congruent, which means angle Z and angle X are also congruent because their angles, angle one and angle two are congruent. So this is now our second step in proving that the shape that we are seeing is a trapezoid because we're able to use the CPCTC theorem to be able to move closer to our proof. And then the next um, item that I'm going to be working on will be line TZ and XW because in this case, if I extend my line TZ and line XY and use its diagonal, I can see that I can use my 
parallel lines cut by a transversal properties to be able to show that angle one and angle two is showing an alternate interior angles in a parallel lines cut by a transversal. So in this case, I can say that TZ is parallel to XY by working backwards because now we showed that we can uh, associate TZ and XY to our parallel lines cut by the transversal. And with that, we can use that in our proof by stating that alternate congruent angles form a parallel lines based on uh, the theorem on parallel lines cut by a transversal. And for the next step that we're going to do, because now we know that TZ and XY, or we have proven that they are parallel, and we are seeing that the opposite angles of our quadrilateral are also congruent, now we are ready to share that this particular quadrilateral is indeed a trapezoid because one of the conditions for a parallelogram to become a trapezoid is that one set of sides would be parallel and then the corresponding angles should be congruent. And we are showing it now based on the proof or the theorems that we have included in our proofs. So now we have proven that by the definition of a trapezoid, XYZW is indeed a trapezoid. So this is how we prove this uh, particular parallelogram by using the theorems that we have learned from our previous lesson. So let's move on to our next shape and our next shape is a kite. So again, make sure to visualize what you need to use in a kite. And here we are seeing congruent sides and we are seeing the diagonals of a kite that is forming a right angle based on the definition and the theorems pertaining to a kite and we're going to be using that in proving that angle CBD and ABD are congruent. So now that we are ready to work on our proof, let's start with the given information that we have. So we know that we are given a trapezoid, I mean a kite ABCD, and the first information that we know is that side DC is congruent to side AD. So we know that they are congruent because it's given, and another congruent items that we have in our information is that CB is congruent to AB. And another information we have, so we have a, a plenty of information about this particular kite, is that angle DEC is forming a 90 degree angle. And that is the triangle CED or angle CED that we are seeing, and it's a right angle and we are also seeing a right triangle of course if we connect dc or line segment dc so now that we have all the informations that we have in a given uh, kite in this particular problem now we're ready to prove that angle cbd so let's visualize where cbd is angle cbd is congruent to angle abd so visually, we are seeing two triangles right next to each other or on top of each other. All we need to do is to prove it using geometry. So for our next step, since we are seeing a right angle using our diagonals, so let's focus on that diagonals and use that information to move closer to our proof. And now that we know that we are seeing a 90 degree angle, let's form a 90 degree the 90 degree angle from this sky. And I'm going to refer CEB or BEC as the angle that I am using. And I'm going to share that CEB is going to be a 90 degree angle because I know that for a fact because of the theorems for a kite. And I'm going to also share that the opposite angle formed in this particular kite, which is highlighted by BEA, will also give me a 90 degree angle. And I know that this is possible because the diagonals of a kite are perpendicular. So with that in mind, we're able to prove that we have formed a 90 degree angle from CEB 
and AEB. And for our next move, we're going to be showing the side that those two triangles or those two angles, they're not yet triangles, but just angles, are sharing. And they are sharing line segment EB. So with this, since we have two different angles sharing the same side, we can use the reflexive property and state that EB is congruent to EB using the reflexive property. Because of this, now that we have identified EB and we have identified line segment CA or CE and EA, now all we need to do is to produce our triangle CBE and triangle AEB and we can do this because the only missing side of this particular uh, triangle to complete its triangle is the hypotenuse. And with that in mind, we can say that triangle CEB is indeed congruent to AEB because one, they're sharing the same side and at the same time, their hypotenuse are congruent. And we can state that using the hypotenuse leg theorem, we are seeing two triangles that are congruent. And when those two triangles are congruent, we are seeing the connection now for angle CBD and angle ABD. And now we can finish the proof by sharing that angle CBE is indeed congruent to ABD because of the two triangles that we have used. And our explanation here would be the CPCTC theorem once again, which is corresponding parts of a congruent triangles are congruent. Therefore, those angles are also congruent. So this is how we um, work on our proof. It may be a little bit challenging, but with practice and making sure that you are visualizing your proof in a diagram similar to what I have shared, it will be a lot easier for you to work out the articulation on the proofs for this particular polygon. So for your challenge for the day, the number bender challenge is to prove that this diagonals of this particular trapezoids are congruent. So you can use the information or the theorems or properties that we have learned in the past so that we'll be able to write a two column proofs to prove that diagonal BD and CA are indeed congruent in this specific trapezoid. And that is our lesson for today in geometry, which is proving. Proving is, again, a true test of our mastery in how we are understanding the theorems and the properties, the definitions of our polygons so that we'll be able to articulate it and write it on a piece of paper that we are indeed, indeed seeing a true statement based on the problem that we are being challenged on. So again, in mathematics, in any skill, practice is what we need to gain confidence to be able to answer complex problems similar to what we just did today. This is Dr. E, and see you again next time.